What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm the Wyoming Guy. You're watching the Wyoming Guy Show. It is finally upon us. Wyoming High School Basketball. Football's had its time. Congratulations to all the state champions. And, uh, guys, it's time for Wyoming High School Basketball basketball and uh, today I'm going to be doing the boys preseason preview tomorrow the girls will have their opportunity to be on the Wyoming guys show but first I have to show you guys a few things boom been sipping on this pilot index all week this is a medium blend from Ethiopia guys this stuff is absolutely delicious it's made by the Cody coffee company that's what fuels the Wyoming guys the Cody coffee company and you guys this stuff is delicious you gotta go get you some and Repping that Wheatland Bulldogs t-shirt today. I actually got this shirt when I went and watched Wheatland play Glenrock. Love it, love it, love it. And check out this shirt I got. I think I might have already shown you this, or maybe I wore it in a video. But if not, bam. South. Love it, love it, love it. Sometimes simple is better. And, and Cheyenne South, they have a really, really nice stadium there. Like, And I know they're one of the newer schools, but they have a really beautiful stadium. I was like, oh my gosh, this place is awesome. And uh, watch them be, absolute, be an absolute juggernaut in a few years. Okay, they're going to be absolutely incredible. Just because beautiful facilities, that's, they got that going for them. Anyway, time to get down to business. All right. So the paper that I printed out was the Wyoming, or the Wyo Preps Coaches and Media Poll. So I don't know who the coaches and the media are that make this list. Um, so I just printed it out and I decided to critique it a little bit because I think they could have done a slightly better job. No offense, but I'm the Wyoming guy and this is my show, so I do what I want. All right, we're going to start with 4A and we're going to work our way down. Oh, Lord, almost knocked that over. We're going to start with 4A and work our way down. And I apologize. Um, somebody pointed out the other day that I actually speak with a lisp and I had no idea. And so sometimes I'll be talking and I might say words wrong. I apologize if I say your name wrong or say your high school's name wrong. I guess I speak with a lisp apparently occasionally. Had no idea. So, 4A. Cheyenne Easton Sheridan sitting at the top of the pack. All right. I can agree with that. That's what the uh, coaches and media poll came out with. All right. But I think it's going to be a very tight race between Sheridan and Cheyenne East. All right. So, Cheyenne East, what does Cheyenne East have going for them? Um, they lost nine seniors graduation last year, but they have a player named Eric Oliver. Eric Oliver is an absolute stud. Oh, excuse me. And, like, look at these numbers he's putting up. 20 points against Natrona, 30 points against Rock Springs, 20 points against Campbell County, 34 points against Central. You can't make these numbers up. This kid's scoring 20 to 30 points a game. All right, it's very, very hard to beat a team when they're scoring 20, to, when a player is scoring 20 to 30 points a game. All right, they're just going to put, be putting up a gross number of points up against you. And Eric Oliver, um, it's time for you to lead the way, time to lead your team to a state championship. It's going to be up to you, man. Not, not putting all the pressure on him, but just saying a lot of the, uh, it's going to be up to him. Okay, a lot of it. He's going to be leading the team. And then for Sheridan, Sheridan has a, a very relatively small team, according to Max Preps. And I know Max Preps is absolutely hot garbage, but, um, you know, that, that they, that's where I'm getting all my rosters from. So according to Max Preps, they have five seniors. Um, and uh, they have a few returning seniors, Tristan Bauer and uh, Parker Christensen. And uh, th they're definitely going to be uh, leading the uh, Sheridan offense. Um, and they're going to be Sheridan's key to uh, winning a state championship this year, in my opinion. Kelly Walsh. Um, Kelly Walsh has a ton of juniors, a ton of sophomores. And uh, that, that's going to be, in a few years, Kelly Walsh is going to be a very, very good team. Don't think they're going to win the state championship this year, but you never know. And then Campbell County, the former champs of 2018. Um, they lost seven seniors to graduation. And uh, their Achilles heel this year, the, thing that they're, the obstacle that they're going to have to get over is going to be Shiny's. I believe they play Cheyenne East twice this year, or no, maybe three times. They lost to Cheyenne East three times last year before um, winning the state championship, and they didn't have even a good record uh, per se last year, but they had an incredible state tournament. So props to them. Campbell County, if you want to win the state championship, you're going to have to get over Cheyenne East. And then Cheyenne Central, it's going to be a rough year for Cheyenne Central. All right, um, they lost both their All-Staters and eight seniors in total. Okay, that is a very, very large amount of players to lose at one time. All right, and um, uh, so I think this is going to be more of a rebuilding year for them, uh, but we'll see. You never know. I mean, that's basically 4A. I can agree with everything else that they put on here. Um, Evanston Thunder Basin, wait. Cheyenne South. They put Cheyenne South way down at the bottom of the list. All right. In my opinion, Cheyenne South only lost four seniors last year. Let's watch them be a very salty basketball team this year. All right, like I said, senior leadership, they only lost four of them. They got some very mature players, some seasoned veterans coming back. Cheyenne South, let's watch them be a good basketball team. 
Then in 3A, I basically can agree with what they came out with. Buffalo is absolutely stacked. All right. Hayden Peterson, two-time All-Stater, and he's returning for his senior season. Aaron Thiel, he's a, he was an All-Stater last year as a sophomore. He's coming back as a junior. And then Lucas Glassick, he was All-Conference last year. He's a senior. And uh, sometimes you do have to look at those All-Conference players. And you guys, Buffalo, I don't think anybody's going to touch Buffalo. Buffalo is absolutely stacked, except for maybe Rollins. So Rollins has 6'7", 200 pound, uh, Hunter Pixler. All right, they did lose five seniors to graduation, but I think Rollins is going to be one of the only teams that can challenge Buffalo, and it's going to have to be in the state tournament. And then uh, Lander and Warland are sitting right there at the bottom of the pack. Um, hear me out on this. Lander and Warland. So Lander, let me find the number here. Um, Lander uh, has, oh, returning All-Stater, Antonio Coando. I apologize if I said that name wrong. Antonio Coando, he's going to be Lander's key uh, to a state championship. All right? Um, it's time for him to lead the team offensively, and uh, he was All-State last year. It's going to be a big year for him. Warland, seven returning seniors, um, and that's really what uh, Warland's arsenal looks like. Um, some seasoned veterans. And uh, hear me out. If Warland can sweep Lander, or if Lander can sweep Warland, They'll be in the state championship, without a doubt. Uh, to quote me on that, if one team can sweep, they'll be in the state championship. And then everything else I can basically ag agree with. Uh, Newcastle, Torrington, Pinedale, and Douglas uh, sitting right there at the bottom of the uh, rankings. Ah, all right, 2A. Pine Bluffs, my boys, sitting at the top of the pack. Pine Bluffs has 10 seniors. Two returning All-Staters, Andrew Fornstrom and Tucker Norman. Guys, Pine Bluffs is absolutely stacked. They had they didn't um, they had a rough football season. I mean, granted they went to the semifinals, but but I think they're gonna have a very good basketball team, and I have them probably winning the state championship. Wind River sitting right below them, and honestly, I didn't even know Wind River. This is my first time ever doing a really in depth review of Wyoming high school basketball, so I didn't even know Wind River was a well known basketball team. And so let's just watch a um, Wind River Wind River Wyoming Indian or Wright will be in the state championship with Pine Bluffs, but I have Pine Bluffs winning it in the end. And then uh, going down the list, Bighorn has two returning all-conference players, but this is where there's a little interesting thing happening here in 2A. Rocky Mountain has nine sophomores, according to Max Preps, which Max Preps is hot garbage, but nine returning sophomores, okay? Let's watch Rocky Mountain in a year or so be a state championship contender. Okay, they're going to have nine, they're going to have nine players who have been they've been through the ringer two or three times. All right, let's watch Rocky Mountain in a few years play for the state championship. Quote me on that. Quote the Wyoming guy on that. And then uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Rocky Mountain graduated with four all-conference players. Now they have nine sophomores. They're probably going to have a pretty rough season. But that's two A. That's two A. Everything else I can agree with. And then in one A. Um, Burlington. I didn't want to put Burlington at the top spot at first. All right, I didn't want to, but at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? Burlington's probably one of the best teams in 1A, and so I left them up there. Farce Needham is where all the interesting stuff is taking place. Um, Farce Needham has two returning All-Staters, Clancy Gines and Lane Mitchelson, but there are a couple of obstacles that Farce Needham has to get over. Encampment and Cokeville. Farsine, I'm talking to you. I'm putting the key to success into your season right now. I'm giving you the secret. If you can beat Encampment in Cokeville, you'll be in the state championship without a doubt. Okay, those are going to be two big obstacles. Okay. And uh, other than that, there's Upton, Encampment, KC, Hanoch, Mountain, Cokeville, and Saratoga, and Matitsi. But there's one team that this media and coaches poll didn't even think about. St. Stevens. He didn't give St. Stevens any love. They're not even in the top nine. Two returning all-conference players. One returning all-state player. Okay, St. Stevens is going to be a very good basketball team. So I scratched out the list that they made and threw Encampment, KC, Hanover Mountain, Cokeville, Saratoga, and Matitsi down the list, and I put St. Stevens up there at number four. St. Stevens, St. Stevens is going to be a very good basketball team. Quote me on that. All right, let's watch them be a very salty team in the state championship. And that's basically Wyoming High School basketball boys for uh, the 2018 preseason preview. All right, and um, that's been this episode of the Wyoming Guys Show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Wyoming Guy. Tomorrow, the girls are going to have their chance to uh, be on the Wyoming Guys Show, and I'll be doing a preseason preview for them. But until next time, I'm the Wyoming Guy. Have a good day.